Hello and welcome everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is my strategy and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. We're very happy to be here with you today and really glad that you could join us. My strategy episodes are live and on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, this week we're going to be talking about perseverance, talking about the power of perseverance discusses the urge to quit and how strong that can be sometimes. But when you stick to something and complete it, really is a key to success. We're also going to talk a little bit about the neuroscience behind perseverance and that dopamine effect. And we're going to provide you some tips and tricks with your perseverance strategy. We're very happy to be here with you today again and glad you can join us. Saturday is a great day to start to reflect on your strategy. It's the day of the week that I choose to reflect on my strategy. The My Strategy Show continues to grow. We're available on iHeart, iTunes, Player FM, YouTube, SoundCloud, Spreaker, and many, many more digital platforms. You can go out there and Google John M. Hawkins, My Strategy, and you will be able to find all sorts of other podcasts out there uh, with our show. You can find me on most social media platforms. Uh, my Twitter handle is HawkinsJohn. And my website is johnmhawkins.com. And just like anything in life, we need to have a strategy and a plan to help us reach our goals because the best laid plans don't always work. This week, I'm looking for your stories on perseverance. Do you have any good examples, perhaps a tip or a trick? Send it to us at talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com. This week, we're talking about perseverance and the power of perseverance. We're going to be talking about uh, persevering even when you want to quit and who hasn't wanted to quit at one point or another. What does it mean to persevere? How can we be brave and not fearless? Do the right thing despite being fearful and afraid. We're going to talk about perseverance being a key to life. While failure can lead to frustration, which leads to fear and shatters our confidence, with some perseverance, we have the ability to continue on, to succeed. And if we don't, we could fail. We're also going to talk about how we can heighten our motivation. And then going to talk a little bit about the neuroscience behind perseverance. And this is pretty exciting because there actually is this dopamine effect that uh, is a chemical reaction that we can use to help create triggers in our lives to increase successes, little successes, which beget a bigger success and begets bigger and bigger and bigger success. So we're going to talk about how this effect separates those winners from the losers. We're going to talk about how dopamine is the fuel that keeps people motivated to help them achieve their goal. We're going to talk about the neuroscience and how we can use it to our advantage to create behavioral change. We're also going to talk a little bit about how when we fail to achieve these little goals on a daily basis, it can dry up our motivation, leaving us feeling apathetic. And these expectations and beliefs that we held no longer are as vivid and clear and bright. So we're going to talk about ways that we can be methodical, create some deadlines, and use all those great strategy and planning skills to help us become successful and persevere when maybe we want to quit. Persevere, what does it mean? It's persistence, tenacity, determination, resolve, resolution, resoluteness, staying power, purposefulness, firmness of purpose, patience, endurance, application, diligence, dedication, commitment, dodginess, steadfastness, tirelessness, stamina, stickability, stick to it, iveness, continuance, and so on. Those are some of the synonyms of persevere. And as we reflect on perseverance, I've got an article here by Jessica Stillman. It says, five steps to persevere even when you really want to quit. She says, the brave aren't fearless. They just do the right thing despite their fear. The same goes for resilience. 
you might think the truly mentally tough never want to quit. But the truth is that perseverance is usually about keeping going, even though you really want to stop. I know there's many times that I want to stop. There's many times that I don't want to persevere. Somehow I stumble through it and continue on. She says, so how do you how do you do that? How do you push on when you're at the lowest point and just want to crawl and hide away from the world for a while? As people are often less than excited to talk about their darkest days, it's important. It's an important question that's rarely discussed in detail. But she says psychologist Rick Hansen has some advice for us. In the introduction to just one thing, that's a newsletter, he recently, he discussed a recent trip to Haiti and the awe he experienced seeing people who were facing dire circumstances press on despite the insurmountable challenges. Their, perseverance, their perseverance inspired him to share his step-by-step -step guide for those who are tempted to quit but really want to find their inner strength to keep going. And I think that's what we're all trying to do is, is find that strength when we know we're going after a goal that's worthwhile and that we can accomplish. The tips are pretty simple. Step one, make sure your goals are worthy of your perseverance. Sometimes you actually should quit. Make sure this isn't one of those times before you do anything else. You can be determined to a fault, Hansen, Hansen cautions. Don't keep going down a tunnel with no cheese. It says, recall past experiences. Remember times in the past when you refused to give up it can help you summon more perseverance now. It could be fierce, strong, stubborn, unyielding, clear, inspired, surrendered, on mission, purposeful, focused, and committed, or all of these. Recall a time when you had this feeling and know it again in your body. Call it up when you need the resources. Take a step. Don't get caught in thinking too far into the future. Often there's something that you can do to make some progress right now. Hansen likes to use the rock climbing analogy where he's taught many people to climb a rock, to rock climb. And he says beginners will often have one foot hold down low, one foot at knee level on solid placement, plus two good hand positions. Yet they can't find any new holds. They feel stuck. But when they simply stand up on the higher foothold, Taking that step that's available, that brings higher handholds and footholds within reach. Take the step. Set your pace. Once you're in the swing of things, you don't want to find yourself back in the doldrums a week, a month, or two later. So avoid frenzied activities that will just burn you out once more. As the old saying goes, slow and steady often wins the race. And just keep going, even if you're only going on in your mind. Having faith that your efforts will pay off and just putting one foot in front of the other is the most basic aspect of perseverance. But sometimes, even that's impossible. You're listening to my strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to talk about the perseverance and how it is a key life skill. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is My Strategy, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. We're very happy to be here with you today and glad you could join us. Uh, My Strategy episodes are live on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. We'd love to get your thoughts. You can send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com. And this week, we're talking about perseverance. Right before the break, we were talking about persevering even when you want to quit. And who doesn't want to quit at one point or another? I assume everybody has. In this segment, I want to talk about how perseverance is a key life skill and how we really need to persevere if we want to have success. I've got an article here by Muhammad Bilal. He says, perseverance is a major key to life success. 
Muhammad goes on to say that each of us thrives on being successful and in doing so often we forget the difficulties that lie in our paths to success. We set targets and want to achieve them right away. But we are humans and may fall short on these goals. Failure at the start can lead to frustration, and it shatters the self-confidence you had at the beginning. You might consider giving up on your dreams because you don't feel you can ever succeed in life. Success, despite the popular belief, isn't a one-way path or a straight line. It's a muddled road with various ups and downs, and you should navigate it with care. Otherwise, you might fall or get lost on your way. However, if you keep going, you will eventually reach your destination. He says, if you ever wondered how some prominent personalities achieved such great success, why did those individuals do, and how did that set them apart from the rest of us? How do they stay positive even when faced with failure? Undoubtedly, successful people must have some secret ingredient that helped them through their journey. How can we get our hands on that secret ingredient, their special formula? He talks about two examples. He says, everyone knows the great Muhammad Ali. And when asked if he liked his training, Muhammad replied, I hated every minute of training. But I said to myself, don't quit. Suffer now and live the rest of your life as a champion. How many of you have liked your training, liked studying, liked going to work, liked doing what you had to do? I don't think anybody truly likes it. But like Muhammad Ali, he saw the training, the education, as, and the pain and suffering as a means to an end. He saw that he could be a champion. He wanted to be a champion. So he trained every minute of every day, not because he liked the training and the pain, but because he wanted to be the champion. Muhammad would push himself to the limit when preparing for his fights by refusing to quit when things got hard. This is a key characteristic of what made him a legendary legend in boxing. What are some of your challenges? What are some of the things that you do on a daily basis that you don't like but have to get through? And if you are going through training, education, tough situations, how are those situations, those struggles, going to help make you stronger? And what if you could just have some small successes when you're struggling and, and not doing what it is that you want to do and you feel like that goal is so far away? Well, if you can continue and gain little successes, that's kind of what perseverance is all about. His next example is the author of Harry Potter series, J.K. Rowling. It says his manuscript, her manuscript was the first, the first book was rejected by 12 publishers when Bloomsbury took it. Here's what she had to say about her failure. Failure meant a stripping away of the inessential. I stopped pretending to myself that I was anything other than what I was. And I began to direct all my energy into finishing the only work that mattered to me. Had I really succeeded at anything else, I might never have found the determination to succeed in the one area I believed I truly belonged. J.K. Rowling, I'm sure, felt like she was a failure. Her book was rejected by 12 publishers, yet she believed in it. She had a passion for it. It was the only thing in her life that mattered to her, so she persevered and ultimately found that one publisher who did believe and see what J.K. Rowling saw. He goes on to say, Muhammad Ali and J.K. Rowling kept on going, remained persistent, and their persistence helped them reach the peak of the mountain. When the world says, give up, hope whispers, try it one more time. Perseverance, steadfastness is doing something 
despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. It doesn't matter what your goal is or how long it takes for you to reach that goal. The chances of your success depend largely on your willingness to persist and persevere. If you truly want something but quit, you'll never know if it would have come true for you. And all it takes is one yes, just one yes, for your dreams to become a reality. Don't stop trying. Perseverance means to go on no matter what it what is in the way to remain steadfast in accomplishing the difficult tasks. It requires a higher level of patience to develop perseverance in you. In addition to helping you master the skill of patience, he gives us some other perks of perseverance. Trustworthiness. Someone who practices perseverance is more trustworthy. Gives you confidence. It increases your sense of self-worth and confidence. You can take ownership of goals. He says, I'm not judged by the number, or it says here, I'm not judged by the number of times I fail, but by the number of times I succeed. And the number of times I succeed is in direct proportion to the number of times I fail and keep trying. According to Tom Hopkins, Heighten your motivation. Perseverance can be summed up to mean you're committed to your goal. Additionally, it enhances the goal's value for you and intensifies your motivation level. It leads you to a wonderful findings and broadens your knowledge about you and those goals which you are trying to achieve. It is a well-established fact that success is not an achieved overnight. There is no such thing as right, fast successes in the world. The road to success is a slow and quite precarious journey at times. It takes hard work and time to build. It makes you solely responsible for the progress. You're listening to My Strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we are going to talk about the neuroscience behind perseverance. You're not going to want to miss this. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. The show is called My Strategy. We're very happy to be here with you today and glad you can join us. My Strategy episodes are live and on Saturdays at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. I'd love to get your thoughts. You can send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com. Right before the break, we were talking about perseverance and how it is a key skill that we need to have to be successful in life. In this segment, I want to talk about something that is extremely exciting to me, and this is the neuroscience behind perseverance. And I always like it when, you know, not only are we when we're trying to accomplish a goal or we're trying to accomplish some task, I love to understand the why behind it. And in this case, I've got an article here that has really helped enlighten me as to why we persevere. What are some of those chemical things that happen in our very complex body to make us want to continue? And so I want to share some of those with you today. This article that I'm referencing and will be reading and referring is called The Neuroscience of Perseverance. Dopamine reinforces the habit of perseverance. It is a slightly dated article, meaning that it was released uh, in the last decade, but still it's a little bit older, but I still think there's a lot of relevant things in it. The author is Christopher Berglund. Talks about what is dopamine. Perseverance. Perseverance separates the winners from the losers in both life and sports. Are you someone who perseveres despite difficulties and setbacks? Or do you tend to throw in the towel and call it quits as soon as you have diversity, challenge, or a setback? What makes some people able to keep pushing and complete a task while others habitually fizzle and don't follow through? Dopamine. Dopamine is the fuel that keeps people motivated to persevere and achieve a goal. 
you have the power to increase your production of dopamine. By changing your attitude and behavior, scientists have identified that higher levels of dopamine, also known as the reward molecule, as being linked to forming lifelong habits, such as perseverance. Neuroscientists have known for years that dopamine is linked to the positive behavior reinforcement and the ding, 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 jackpot feeling that you get when you accomplish a goal. Recently, they've also discovered that the specific receptors that link dopamine directly to the formation of good and bad habits. Now, we don't need to understand the full effect of or the scientific nature behind how this is happening in our very complex bodies. But what I do want you to think about is think about what are some of those triggers that give you that dopamine effect. And if we can get more of those triggers on a daily basis, if we can start to find little successes and get that dopamine trigger, you know, success begets success, meaning one success leads to another, leads to another, leads to another. Well, each one of those little successes has a chemical reaction in your brain, and that is what keeps you going. Every time you get that reward, you want to continue, you want to perse persevere, you want to accomplish. So we want to start thinking about what are those triggers that release dopamine. It says, based on a study, they found that the key receptors for dopamine function like gateways that are essential to habit forming. Dopamine neurons regulate circuits all over the brain, but they also need to be regulated too. Dr. Joe Tsin, co-director of the Brain and Behavioral Discovery Institute at Georgia Health Sciences University, says that this discovery opens the door to speeding up the process of forming good habits and possibly selectively removing bad ones, such as drug addiction, smoking, and more. He says part of the, his work with the athlete's way is to make neuroscientific knowledge a tool that can be used to create behavioral changes in your life. He says, currently, I am fine-tuning the message to help get preteens and teens self-motivated to be more physically active. In this article, it gives examples of all ages and a prescriptive way to trigger the release of dopamine. And he shows you ways that you can do that. Uh, and his goal is really to help teens. So if this can help teens, and if you're not a teen, if you're an adult, we still can use these. He says, on a recent trip to Boston, he had the opportunity to speak with personality traits that led to changing behavioral habits with an associate professor of exercise and health sciences, uh, Dr. Jean Weicha, who is the director of the Go Kids program there. Dr. Weicha has been doing community research for over 20 years. Dr. Weicha and her team are taking the emphasis off of obesity and shifting it to empowering kids who want to be more healthy because they love the feeling and consequences of being physically active and getting and eating better. The biggest payoff isn't simply shedding the lowering or, of pounds or getting an ideal BMI, but it's a broad spectrum of improving the activity and well-being that brings their personal academics that brings their personal and academic lives. So what they're focusing on is they're not just focusing on telling the kids what to do, but they're trying to get the kids to have these little triggers that releases dopamine that gets the kids to the point where they want to do the eating habits, where they are now rewarded for a healthy eat versus not, and they're rewarded for exercise. She believes that regular physical activity is the most effective way to begin hardwiring the habit of perseverance. Anytime you lace up your sneakers and start moving your body and achieve a goal, you're reinforcing a mindset of perseverance that can bleed into all aspects of your life. So that's what she's working on. It's really, how do we go about identifying these little triggers in life that are going to increase the dopamine effect? And as you do that, those reward sensors are going to fire. And when they fire, you're going to feel good and awesome. And then next day you do it, you feel good and awesome, and you continue to do it. All right.
You're listening to My Strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the PBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to continue to talk about the neuroscience, but also we're going to talk about how failure to achieve your goals can completely dry up your motivation. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins. We're coming to live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. The show is called My Strategy. Today, we're talking about the uh, perseverance. Right before the break, we were talking about the neuroscience of perseverance and how we can use it as a way to feel successes and ultimately achieve goals. Before the break, we were talking about, uh, I was referring to an article called The Neuroscience of Perseverance, written by Christopher Berglund. We're talking about how the dopamine reward system works. It's referred to as your internal reward system, which is a collection of brain structures that regulate your behavior by making you feel good when you achieve a goal. Everything necessary for the survival of our species, eating, mating, sleeping, Physical exercise is rewarded by a flood of neurochemicals that makes us feel good. It's a very generous biological design and at the same time necessary for our survivals. survival. All animals seek pleasure and avoid pain. Therefore, nature created an internal reward system that reinforces lifestyle habits necessary to survive. Dopamine floods your body and mind with a rush of satisfaction and reward any time you succeed at achieving something biologically necessary for your survival. So that's what we're talking about, and we're talking about ways that we can get that effect with little triggers, doing tasks to give us that uh, dopamine effect, and then basically we want to do it again and again and again, and if you can accomplish a success and then do another one, another, another one, you finally have success. And it can be as simple as making your bed in the morning. You feel success. You feel accomplished. But um, what happens when you don't accomplish those daily goals? What happens when you don't accomplish those daily goals? Low levels of dopamine make you apathetic. If you do not accomplish something every day, your dopamine reserves will diminish as human beings, we are designed to work hard and to be rewarded for their biological efforts. Being uninspired or lacking motivation is a downward spiral that can snowball out of control. It's so easy to become bitter, cynical, hopeless when your dopamine reserves are low. But you have the power to turn this around by consciously looking at everything you achieve. These aren't big accomplishments. The author says, what about flossing your teeth, taking out the trash? As a way to tap your dopamine reserves, look at everything you do in the day as a chance to create a sense of reward and deliver a rush of dopamine. And I think we need to pause on this. Many of us are out there trying to achieve goals, but if we are in a state where we are down and out, dejected, we don't have any accomplishments, doing anything in life can feel like it is climbing Mount Everest. And I like what the author says here. Let's not just focus on those huge goals that we want to achieve, because if you think about it, if you need to have re your reward system, you know, you need to be rewarded every day, you know, day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, if you've got a long-term goal that's going to take you six months to achieve and you start working towards it and you, in day one, no reward, day two, no reward, day three, no reward, day four, no reward, day five, no reward, are you going to go through six months worth of no rewards and still be excited about the goal? I think not. So what we want to do is we want to build that dopamine reserve. We want to do little things like make your bed, floss your teeth, take out the trash, accomplish something, accomplish anything. It doesn't have to be related to your goal. You know, one of the strategies that they teach to people who are trying to get out of debt is to pay off the smallest bill they have first. 
Now, if you studied accounting or finance, you know that logically the higher interest rate bills are the ones that should be paid first. But I got to thinking, why are all these experts saying pay off the smallest one first? And the reason they're saying pay off the smallest one first is because they want someone to feel that they have accomplished some goal. And while, you know, the the financial analyst, the advisor is going to say pay off the higher interest rates first, they're looking at it from a different perspective, which is the reward system. So I think it's smart. It says brain puzzles and brain teasers. Games are a great way to tap your dopamine reserves. Anytime you win at a computer game, solve a riddle, you get the ding, 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 dopamine feeling. In your downtime, you can use games and puzzles to make your dopamine levels swell. Playing word games and solving puzzles not only flexes your mental muscle, but it keeps the dopamine pumping. Well, if this is true, and we're talking about, you know, years ago and even now, they say, well, kids shouldn't be playing video games. Kids shouldn't be, um, you know, on their technology, on their devices. Maybe they still should be on their devices, but we need to make sure that they are doing games that are helping to trigger these this dopamine feeling. Somebody who is excels at video games has the ability to transition that into other areas of life. So let's not just say that it's not good to play video games. It's not good, you know, to have your kids on the iPads, to have them on the technology, but let's find ways to get that reward system going. Goes on to say that expectation and belief can produce dopamine. There's an article by Ted Kaptuchuk, who is a director of placebo studies, and he said that... Um, even if a patient believes a placebo drug is the real thing, it can trigger the body to produce a chemical and that subsequent healing response. Be methodical, create self-imposed deadlines. This is extremely important. To produce more dopamine, get in the habit of setting deadlines and completing goals in a timely manner, which means that you need to create a schedule. That includes self-imposed deadlines. Stick to it. Use calendars and peer pressure to keep you on track and help you condition yourself. Partner with like-minded friends who have similar goals and make a pact that you will hold each other accountable towards those deadlines. The release of dopamine is amped up when there are time constraints involved, but don't let the last-minute rush of manic panic become a habit. The use of time constraints in sports and games shows the increase of production of dopamine and amplifies the thrill of having finished a goal on time, but this hastiness can backfire in real life. Structure your challenges to have many self-imposed deadlines that will release a steady dose of dopamine. Be methodical. Stop leaving things till the last minute. You want to keep the flow of dopamine constant and break up that roller coaster pattern of procrastination. You're listening to my strategy. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. When we come back, we're going to help you develop your perseverance strategy. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. Very happy to be here with you today. Today, we're talking about perseverance. The power of perseverance and how we can, um, how we need it in life. It's something extremely important. Right before the break, we were talking about how failure to achieve our goals can dry up motivation. We we're specifically talking about how the dopamine effect is our reward system, and that if we have a spike in our dopamine levels on a daily basis, that is going to give us that sense of satisfaction, good feelings, and can trigger more and more dopamine in our bodies, in our brains, and that whole system tells us, hey, you're doing a good job, continue. So we were talking about that and how important it was to set deadlines, complete goals in a timely manner, and how important it was to have that daily schedule. 
and um, you know, including self-imposed deadlines, how do we stick to it, et cetera, which leads us into this segment's discussion, which is developing your strategy. So as we think about perseverance, not giving up, not quitting, we have you know learned a lot about what perseverance is, who's been successful, who has, well, we haven't talked about who hasn't, but we have talked about who has been successful. We talk about the dopamine effect and the, the science behind what makes that work. But now as we start to get into our strategy, we want to put together a strategy, which is a course of actions that includes tactics put it in a plan of some sort to help us be successful. So I've got a five-step process, which is awareness. You know, what's your vision, your goals? What are you trying to accomplish? So let's say, for example, we're aware that we do not persevere, and we now want to be someone who does persevere. Okay, so the next thing to do is assess and analyze. And when we assess and analyze the situation, we need to figure out what the steps are we taking that we need to take. So, where are we in our perseverance strat in our perseverance strategy? Where are we? Are we somebody who is has, you know, at ground zero where you just go day by day by day and if you made no changes of what you're doing on a daily basis, you're going to be the, in the exact same spot that you are 10 years from now. Right? So, I do nothing today. 10 years from now, I'm in the same spot. Or are you somebody who is doing negative things, negative activities, where 10 years from now, you're going to be farther back than you would want to be? Or are you in a situation where you're doing these activities and these daily activities 10 years out from now is going to put you in a much better position? So we want to figure out where we are because there's some people who might be overachievers today and are doing too much. And we've got others who are at ground zero and doing absolutely nothing, and they need help becoming becoming successful and, and learning to persevere. So depending on where you are in that spectrum, we really need to take a look at your activities and figure out exactly which of those activities are going to help you reach your goal. So that's where the assess and analyze comes from. If you're somebody who has no starting point, maybe making your bed in the morning every morning and just getting that sense of satisfaction is something you should be focusing on. Brushing your teeth could be something that you are focusing on. And I assume many of you are not in that position, but many are. You might be in a situation where you are having this dopamine effect and feeling like you're persevering towards a goal, but you accomplish goals every five days, every six days, eh, you know, kind of you're doing it, but not as often as you should. <clears throat> so if you're doing it not as often as you should, number one, are those activities that you're doing going to help you reach your long-term goal? Number one. Number two, if you are doing those activities, are they the, the activities and are you doing them frequently enough with enough, you know, excitement with enough reward system being triggered to help keep you motivated as you go through it. So that's kind of in the middle of the spectrum. And then on the end of the spectrum, you might be pursuing a goal or going after something and you're getting that reward system triggered ding, ding, ding every day, a couple times a day, you're super excited. You are making progress, but it is a goal that you are never, ever, ever going to achieve or it could be a goal that somebody else has set for you. It could be a goal that isn't going to get you where you want to be in the future. So there's all different spectrums and where we could be. But, and we need to take a look at where we want to go, where we are today, and then figure out what, are, what is our strategy and our plan. So are we doing activities we shouldn't do? Are we, should we introduce new activities? Is there a skill we need to learn? Is there a, and by skill, I mean not just hard skill, but a soft skill, right? That's what this show is all about, personal development and soft skills that we need to learn. And once we've identified these, we need to test it out and we need to try it. We need to set up our schedule. We need to have little accomplishments every day. 
And if those little accomplishments that give us that chemical dopamine effect that helps triggers our reward system are accomplished on a daily basis, odds are, based on the science and everything we've kind of learned, it is going to help you feel better and better about those little accomplishments, which is going to set you up to be in a much better position to be able to accomplish your goals. And I think that, you know, as you start to think about this, know that it is very difficult to, you know, put together a strategy because sometimes the strategy that worked for Joe or worked for Mary or whomever, you think, well, I'm just going to do the same thing and it's going to work for me. Well, that's not always the case. Also, you know, it can be, it, you know, when, when you do fail, it, it's, it's a hard hit and it can keep you excited and motivated about moving on. So what are those things we can do? So just some ideas that you can use as you develop your perseverance strategy. You're listening to my strategy. I am your host, John M. Hawkins, coming to you live from the PBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. When we come back, we're going to help you put your strategy in action. We'll be right back. Hello and welcome back, everyone. I'm John M. Hawkins. The show is My Strategy, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. Welcome. Glad to have you here. We're talking about perseverance this week. And in case you missed this broadcast, you can listen on iHeartRadio, Apple iTunes. Or if you'd like to have something covered in the show, you can send an email to talk at johnmhawkins.com. That's talk at johnmhawkins.com. Or give us a call at 1-844-MY-STRATEGY. Well, this week we're talking about perseverance. We've been talking about the power of perseverance. Perseverance is something that we need even when we want to quit. It's going to help us continue on. We talked a little bit about what it means to persevere, how being brave, not fearless, and doing the right thing despite being fearful. We know that people in dire circumstances, far beyond some of the circumstances that I've ever had to do or be in, these people have found ways to do great things despite their situation. The question came up, what is different about them and why are they able to overcome these great challenges, but I'm not? We learned that perseverance is a key to life. And while failure can lead to frustration, which leads to fear and shatters our confidence, we learned that there are people who persevere when others fail. We learned that we need to heighten our motivation. We learned that we need to be able to develop this perseverance like those other people who have shown us that despite being in dire circumstances, that despite not being able to accomplish things, they were able to persevere. We came back to the question of why is this so? And we learned that there's actually neuroscience behind perseverance. There's neuroscience behind forming of habits. There's neuroscience behind all of this, and it's based on the dopamine effect and that little reward center in our brain, that reward center that says, hey, you did a good job, or keep going. We learned that dopamine is the fuel that keeps people motivated to achieving a goal. And we can use this dopamine effect to identify and find triggers within our lives to help us have little successes. Each of these little successes this triggers this reward center and gets us to a point where we can develop habits. Now, failure to achieve any of these goals is going to dry up the motivation. It is going to dry up that the total reward system that we have in our brain. And if we are not accomplishing things on a daily basis, these low levels of dopamine, it's going to make you apathetic. It's going to make you feel miserable, like you can't accomplish anything. 
So what we need to do is we need to put together a strategy. We need to put ourselves in those situations where we are challenged. We need to put ourselves in those situations where there's heightened expectation, where there's time deadlines, where we are forced to do something or else. Now, many times these can be self-imposed deadlines, putting something on the calendar. It can be making your bed in the morning, brushing your teeth. Depending on where you are in that spectrum, we need to start doing those things to help create that dopamine effect. But all of this requires that we break these bad habits that we're in. And if we're trying to break a bad habit, we need to be aware of those patterns. We then need to start thinking about how we can consciously prioritize and commit to our new goals, how we can commit to these new intentions. Because in doing so, it's going to increase our chance of success. And finally, clarity. By providing clarity of what we need to do, we are going to be in a much better chance of accomplishing our goals and persevering. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. It's been an absolute pleasure. Hope you have a great day, and we'll see you next time.